Well, Michael Penix Jr. and the Washington Huskies are one win away from a national championship. They are undefeated, 14-0. and Wrap your head around that for a second. 14-0, and the way they played this season, the way they won games. Frankly, uh, it's a great story. And I couldn't help but think during the Sugar Bowl as they were late in the game, you know, battling Texas to the wire in a close game, I couldn't help but think of how the Pac-12 conference as a whole really helped fortify Washington for that moment. I mean, really think about it. Think about Washington having to beat Arizona in September. Think about Washington in that first game against Oregon in week seven, having to uh, outlast the Ducks at Husky Stadium. Think about the Apple Cup being a three-point victory for Washington. Think about how tough Arizona State, Kenny Dillingham's team, played Washington. Think about the back-and-forth game Washington had against USC. Think about that second matchup with Oregon in the in the Pac-12 championship game. Like, Washington won all of those close games, and people like to trot it out and say, oh, they look at how many consecutive games by fewer than 10 points the Huskies won. But I, I, I was watching the end of the game and thinking, gosh, Washington has been in this position all season long. They've been in close games. They've got the best player on the field. They know how to win games in a variety of ways. And frankly, you could argue they won the game both on offense with Michael Penix Jr. and on defense with the defense making that stand at the end of the game against Texas that was remarkable. But Washington had been in that position a number of times throughout the season. And it gets me thinking about how good the Pac-12 conference was in this so-called final year of existence. The Conference of Champions, didn't it really deliver? Like, not only did it put Washington in the national championship game against Michigan, but it gave us a really good Oregon team that could make a case that it was playoff worthy by virtue of how close it played Washington this season. It gave us Oregon State. It gave us Colorado and Washington State early part of the year. Great momentum. It gave us an amazing story in Tucson with Jed Fish in Arizona turning their season around. It gave us a rebuild story in Palo Alto with Stanford and Cal and Caleb Williams, the defending Heisman Trophy winner, trying to, you know, keep USC on the field, even though they didn't have any defense and keep them relevant and and worthy. And I just look at the way that those teams played and I look at how good this conference was this last season. And I'm left feeling a little flat about how the media rights negotiations went. I'm not buying this nonsense that, you know, with a little more patience, it all would have worked out. See, you know, would have been a, everyone would have been able to see the value of Oregon and Washington and see the value of, uh, you know, Colorado and Arizona in this uprising that's happening. And, you know, if it was just a year later, television would have bought in on it. No, 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 no. I think TV got what it wanted. It parted out the Pac-12 conference, right? It, it, it disintegrated it. Then it picked over it and said, we'll take that media market and that media market And so I think TV got what it wanted in the end. But I'm left thinking about the conference as a whole, 108-year-old conference. It's a shame that this is the last year that it will exist in its present form. And I'm hopeful, like a lot of people, that the Pac-12 can be put back together again someday. But I got sick and tired in the last five or six or seven years of seeing the Pacific time zone left out of the college football playoff national championship picture, certainly. In the, in the playoff in general, it just, you could have lopped off everything west of the Rocky Mountains and said, okay, that doesn't matter in the postseason in major college football. Well, Washington has made that uh, different this season. They do matter. They have mattered. They will matter. They may win the national championship game. Hey, heck, they got the best player. I'm picking the Huskies to beat Michigan. But amid that, I'm framing it like from a conference standpoint and looking at the Pac-12 and thinking, gosh, this was a really good conference this season. It had great players. It had great teams. It had great coaching. Fan bases were remarkable. This conference deserved better than what it got. Now, I think Washington's going to get a lot of people in the Pacific time zone and the, in the Pac-12 footprint who will root for it. Not because just because it's a Pac-12 team, but because – I think people in that in this part of the country have felt alienated by the college football playoff over the years. Oregon made the national championship game in 2015. You know, Washington played against Alabama in a semifinal, but 
outside of those two appearances, you know, the fans in the Pacific time zone have been left out of this thing. San Diego State gets to the national title game in the men's NCAA tournament. It injected some enthusiasm and some interest from the western part of the United States in the tournament. It's part of the beauty of the NCAA tournament. Finally, in its last year, this blasted four-team invitational has given us a team in the Pacific time zone again competing for a national championship. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I think Washington and Michael Penix Jr. will win the thing, but I also am left feeling a little flat about how the Pac-12, you know, sort of is going out. Is it going out with a bang or a whimper? I don't know, but I think it deserved better.